Hello everybody, this is Gamergar, welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. For today's video, we are going to talk about secrets that the pros don't want you finding out. So let's jump into the video, and let's have some fun. The first item we're going to talk about today is the wood chipper. Now everyone knows wood chippers can be used to convert items back down into regular wood, but I'm going to show you some really good methods here that will allow you to get wood very quickly. So I just used mega bombs there and I blew all these trees away. Now this is a double edged sword. It does save an absolute ton of time because it means I don't have to cut down the trees. But the drawbacks are, number one, the wood chippers got cut up in the blast and so did my lovely tiled floors. So they got destroyed which means I had to buy more wood chippers from Robin. Now they only cost a thousand gold and you can get wood chippers as early as winter year one. Robin will actually start selling you these. But also I didn't get back any mahogany seeds which means I can't replicate the forest that I just blew down. I would have to go elsewhere with my axe to try to, you know, accumulate mahogany seeds again. So, it's also worth noting too that the wood chipper will give you between 5 and 10 wood, but there's a 2% chance it will give you between 15 and 20 wood. So, let's look at the skills here. We have Forester, which means we get 25% more wood from trees, and Lumberjack. All trees have a chance to drop hardwood. Lumberjack isn't very useful on the hardwood trees. However, Forester is super handy. 25% more wood is an absolute no-brainer. The shaving enchant on the axe is a great way to go as well, because shaving will give us extra pieces of wood when we cut down trees. Now, it will only give us uh, additional, you know, regular wood, but it's still better than nothing. So this time, we're going to cut down all the trees with our axe, and we're going to get tons of mahogany seeds. That means that we can replicate the forest again, no problem at all. It's also worth noting too that you can put driftwood into these wood chippers, and you get back 5 to 9 wood. But there's also a very small chance the wood chippers, when you put in hardwood, will give you back maple syrup, oak resin, and pine tar. So there's about a 0.66% chance you'll get back those. That's actually really handy if you're looking to make kegs or if you're looking to make bee houses or things like that, you know? So the wood chipper is extremely overpowered. It is by far the best processing machine in the game to accumulate hundreds and thousands of wood by just growing mahogany trees. Next up, let's talk about the beauty of the bone mill. I have two chests here. The first chest is filled up with artifacts that are exclusive to Ginger Island only. All of these artifacts you see here can be given to Professor Snail to complete his mini quest, which gives you the ostrich incubator and tons of golden walnuts. But more importantly, what do you do when you're finished his mini quest? What do you do with these items when you have multiples of them from exploring Ginger Island? You put them straight into the bone mill. And because these items are so good, you only need one of each to put into the bone mill to get back extraordinary items. Now you can get back fertilizers, you can get back speed grow, you can even get back tree fertilizers, which means you can have huge tree farms within just a few days. So the bone mill is one of those items that you should get your hands on as quickly as possible. All you have to do to get your hands on the bone mill is to do the special orders quest for Gunther, which is called Fragments of the Past. It's a very easy quest to do, you just need to get him 100 bone shards and you can get your hands on this bone mill no problem at all. As we can see here, Deluxe Speed Grow is a, is a very nice item to get. 25% reduced growth rate on all crops, that's absolutely amazing. In the next chest, we have artifacts and items that you can get from Stardew Valley. You can also get a lot of these in Ginger Island as well, but all of those items you just saw there can be put into the bone mill for you to get extra goodies. And these items include a lot of bone-related artifact items that you can give to Gunther. They also include bone shards, of course. And the great thing about this is that if you play the game for as long as I have, you probably have a chest filled up to the top with all of these items. So if you have them, put them into a bone mill and get back lovely farming goodies. All of these items you get from the bone mill can be used on your farm to enhance your crops, which means more money for you. The tree fertilizer is especially potent and the deluxe speaker. They're, in my opinion, by far the best items you can get from using the bone mill. You're also saving tons of resources uh, needed to make these items, especially the tree fertilizer and the deluxe speed grow. So when it comes to the bone mill, you should utilize it as quickly as you can because you're gonna save tons of time with it. You only need bone fragments, clay and stone to make the bone mill. Stone and bone fragments are super easy to get. Clay can be a little bit more difficult. You could use the exploits, you could use the clay farming techniques, or you can just go to the dig site here you can put a few mega bombs on the ground and in return you're going to get back tons of clay. You're also going to get back loads of bone related items that you can put in 
to your bone mill. So I'm just going to put another mega, mega bomb right here. Now because the mega bombs, the blast radius is so big, you only need to max three mega bombs to get all the resources from this boneyard. And when you have all the resources gotten, just leave it for about a week, come back, and you can get all these lovely resources again. As you can see there, I'm after getting an absolute ton of clay by planting a bomb. Just look at all the clay I got back. Over 50 pieces of clay. I can make tons of bone mills using all those resources now. Could you imagine a farm built up the top of bone mills? Speaking of getting resources for bone mills, let's show you a real nice ring combination here. The savage ring with the luck ring and the burglar ring with a luck ring. So what we're going to do is we're going to farm skeletons for bone shards. But we are also going to use what an item called a monster musk. And that drastically increases the monster spawn rates inside the mines. We're also going to go into the hardened version of the mines because a lot more monsters spawn in there. So we're just going to hit 70 floors. This is where all the lovely skeletons spawn. Now these are harder than the regular skeletons, but because of the ring combinations we're using, we're maximizing our farming potential of these monsters. The burglar ring will see to it that these monsters will drop double the loot for us. The savage ring means we're going to get a speed buff when we kill these monsters, meaning that we can farm more of these every single day. Now, the floaty skulls don't really drop the bone shards, but they can drop skeleton hands and other skeleton items that we can put directly into the bone mill. But these regular skeletons drop very nice items indeed. They can also drop radioactive bars. They can drop prismatic shards. They can drop a lot of real nice items. But you're coming out here primarily for the bone shards. So while we're in the mines, let's talk about a bug meat. So if you take a monster musk, Go down into the into the twenties and farm the bugs. You can get hundreds of bug meat every single day from farming these bugs. Why am I talking about bug meat? Well, let's hold that thought for a second. Let's also talk about slime. Why do we want tons of slime? The reason why we want tons of slime and bug meat is to make a particular item in this game that will get you huge profits. So obviously, when it comes to slime, you can't go wrong with a slime watch. And any slime will do, green slimes, blue slimes, you know, purple slimes, tiger slimes, they'll all make these lovely slime eggs for you. The reason why I'm only getting slime eggs on the left hand side and not the right hand side is because I put some flooring down. It just makes it easier to harvest the slimes. So we go to the Adventures Guild and what we're going to do is we're going to make a ring called the Sturdy Ring. And you can get this when you reach level, I believe it's level 2 combat. And all you need to make it is some copper bars, some bug meat and some slime. And the Sturdy Ring will sell for a whopping... 750 gold and you can very easily accumulate items to make this now if you sell the items separately you won't make as much money so if you've got tons of slime bug meat and copper bars just lying around the place make us have tons of sturdy rings and that would make you huge profits that is why the adventures guild is so handy because you can sell rings and weapons in here but more importantly you can abuse the adventures guild a little bit and you can sell tons of sturdy rings to make even more money. So next up, let's talk about sheep. Now I have mentioned sheep before, but the thing about sheep is that if a sheep has full friendship, it will generate more wool for you every single day. If you have the shepherd profession, a sheep will generate wool faster. So if you combine that perk with a maxed out heart sheep, it will generate wool for you every single day. The shepherd profession also comes with a hidden perk. And what it does is that the, the sheep will generate higher quality items for you. Look at all the iridium will I have there. See, that's the beauty of sheep. I can leave them in the barn. I can sleep for days, weeks, months, years. They will generate wool every single day as long as they are fed. And what we can do now is we can use the loom. And the loom is something you might not see a whole lot of people use. But the loom will convert wool into cloth. We all know that. However, did you know? that a silver piece of wool has a 10% chance to give back double cloth, a 25% chance for gold and a 50% chance for iridium. That means if you convert tons and tons of iridium wool, you have a 50% chance to get back double the cloth. Now it's also worth noting too that the cloth is an artisan item, it isn't an animal product. So my advice to you is that use your rancher and your shepherd professions if you're not doing much on the farm and your sheep are just generating wool every single day but switch it up to the artisan profession when you sell the cloth because the artisan will give you a 40 percent extra bonus when you're selling artisan items that's a much larger profit for you that's an extra 40 percent in the pocket from selling all that cloth and if you have a barn filled up the top with sheep you can accumulate tons and tons of wool no problem 
So the statue of uncertainty here, only 10,000 gold and you can swap the perks from each profession. So we're just going to choose the farming profession here, we're going to go to sleep. And now we're going to go back to the tiller here and we're going to go to artisan. Now do not sell your items on the same night you've changed professions because the perks won't kick in until the next day. So I'm just going to sell the items out the next day after changing the professions. And look at all the money I get for 999 pieces of cloth. 657,000 gold. It's absolutely amazing. And let's also talk about chickens, golden chickens. Look at their lovely golden eggs. They sell for so much. 1,000 gold for the golden egg. But if you have the rancher perk, 20% more for animal products, they sell for 1,200 gold apiece. Now, you can convert those golden eggs into mayonnaise. You get three mayonnaise for every golden egg, but it's, it's worth it to sell the golden egg itself if you have the rancher profession, of course. And you can just leave those chickens in your barn for the whole year and just let the eggs accumulate. Like I've, you know, the auto grabber will just do the work for you. The auto petter will ensure that they don't lose friendship points. So that's the rancher and the coop master. Coop master is important because it increases the chances of your chickens laying higher quality eggs. So iridium eggs are the way to go. And this doesn't just apply for chickens, this applies for any coop animal. You know, if you want to get higher quality products such as duck feathers, rabbit's foots. Let's talk about the mushroom trees. Now, you can get mushroom seeds from Key's secret walnut room. You can just plant them in your farm. All you need is one seed. So, if you, I have heavy tappers set up here, and basically these will generate mushrooms for me all the time. Now, I just got a bunch of common mushrooms there, which is all right. However, on the 10th or 20th of each month, there is a huge chance that these tappers will give you back purple mushrooms. Look at all the purple mushrooms I'm getting now. Purple mushrooms are absolutely amazing for healable foods. They give you back tons of energy. They also give you back a very nice portion of health. And if you have loads of healable foods yourself, you can always sell them and make huge profits that way. Each purple mushroom sells for 250 gold. You could set up huge mushroom farms like this and make loads of money as a mushroom farmer if you wanted to play the game that way. So this is another beautiful method for you to make tons of money in the game. And it, all you need is five key gems for one mushroom tree seed. That's all you need, just five key gems. Plant that, and that tree will generate seeds all around it for the whole year except winter. So I'm going to leave the video there. I hope you enjoyed it. As per usual, the next Stardew Valley video will be uploaded for Sunday for you to enjoy. And what a whopper of a video that will be. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then hit that subscribe button. So you'll be notified when future Stardew Valley content and other content is released on this channel. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.